How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. Now, we all have been waiting for NVIDIA to announce their new range of gaming graphics cards. Uh, it was either the 11 series or the 2000 series, there was just rumors going around. But now, uh, finally, uh, last night for me, or yesterday, NVIDIA announced their new RTX range of high-end GPUs. Now, currently, they only showcase their 2080 Ti, 2080, and a 2070. No word yet on any lower than that GPUs. That will probably come out in a few more months. Now, most of you might already know about the specs and everything else about these GPUs. Uh, so I'm not going to go over everything like extremely in depth. Instead, I'm going to go over it quickly and then also uh, give my thoughts on these new GPUs and where they might perform the best. Uh, should you buy them now or should you rather wait a bit uh, and if it's actually just worth getting now. So with all of that being said, let's jump into today's video right after this. Do you live in South Africa and want to get the best deals on all the latest gaming products? Well, Rebeltech is the best place to check out. They have a huge variety of peripherals, PC components, laptops, and just everything else you would need. So go check out rebeltech.crza to get the products you are looking for at a low price. Now the main focus for this uh, new architecture and especially the RTX range is ray tracing technology. So we don't really get the GTX anymore, it's now the RTX range and they are focusing on more of the ray tracing which a lot of you guys would probably have seen especially in that Star Wars demo trailer uh, where the light reflects off the armor and just adds a ton of more realistic lighting inside the world or inside the game depending on what you want to go for. Uh, now apparently it took NVIDIA almost 10 years to fully develop the turning architecture to handle all of this ray tracing technology because it's a really heavy tens of load and most of the stuff nowadays you can't really run it very strongly. For example, also with uh, that uh, Star Wars trailer, they had to use like a supercomputer, the DXR, that costs around $68,000 and that has four, uh, four Tesla GPUs handling or rendering the entire thing. Now also with this a new chip, instead of just getting a single core like Pascal that does everything, now the turning architecture has a three cores inside the chip that handles all of the tasks and just spreads it out evenly. And now going along with the ray tracing, again, like I mentioned with the Star Wars demo, they had to use that DXG $68,000 machine, where with that machine, the entire demo was running at only 18 frames. And now with the new turning architecture, they were able to get up to 22 frames on a single GPU. So for a single GPU compared to four Tesla GPUs, that is a massive increase. Same goes with uh, the infiltrator demo based on the Unreal Engine 4. Uh, they were able to uh, run it at 78 frames at 4K with the turning uh, GPUs instead of only 38 frames on a GTX 1080 Ti. Now what about the specifications for the new RTX 2000 series GPUs compared to the previous generation GTX 1000 series? From uh, the specs we have we can see that the new 2000 series is a lot faster compared to the GTX equivalent but then we have to look at the price as well. Uh, when we take a look at the 2080 Ti, the CUDA cores is a lot more, it's 800 more than the 1080 Ti. Uh, the memory speed is also faster now with GDDR6 at 14 gigabits per second compared to only 11 gigabits a second to the 1080 Ti's GDDR5X. Uh, but when we look at the price difference between these, it's a pretty massive. So for the 2080 Ti, the Founders Edition is going for $1,199 compared to the 1080 Ti's Founders Edition price at only $699. So that kind of makes the new 2080 Ti fall more in the Titans range instead of 
kind of the mainstream uh, supply trains they don't really compare uh, so I would rather say the 2080 I would take on the 1080 Ti uh, there they kind of fall in the same price range as $100 more at $799 compared to the $699 uh, but that is kind of more the, the price range that we are looking at so when we compare the new 2080 to the previous 1080 Ti, the 1080 Ti has more CUDA cores, it also has a more memory, and then also it has a higher memory bandwidth. The 2080 does have a higher core clock, and then also the memory speeds is 14 gigabits a second compared to only the 11 for the 1080 Ti. So when looking at the specs only on a paper, the 1080 Ti should be faster than the 2080. The 1080, the 2080 will probably be faster, but we'll have to look at that price difference because now that was at launch the 699 for the 1080 Ti and the 1080. 1080 uh, prices nowadays are a lot lower, so you will have to see how much the uh, prices is actually going for. But now that's not the only specs we have for these new cards. Something new in NVIDIA added is a Giga Rays and then also RTX Ops. Uh, currently we have it for the new RTX GPUs but we don't have any specifications for the previous uh, GTX ranges. So there, there will be quite a bit of a difference. We'll probably see it, uh, like NVIDIA says, six times more, uh, because that's kind of what the GPUs are made for. So now, now, currently, we don't really have any benchmarks to really see what the difference uh, compared to the cards is in a Giga Ryzen RTX Ops and all of that. So currently, that's just a number we have. We know these new cards are going to be a lot faster in the those specs than the previous generation uh, but also we don't really know how much faster. Now at the press release Nvidia said that the new 2070 is going to be faster than a Titan XP and the turning architecture is also six times faster than a 1080 Ti. Now the thing is, they say all of this, but they only compare it against the ray tracing technology. They don't really compare it against any other thing, and we didn't see any other like real benchmarks. They only say that ray tracing. So we do know that for ray tracing, that these new RTX cards is going to be amazing, but we don't know how really it's going to perform in every other day tasks. How is it actually going to perform? in games that don't have a ray tracing built in. Now currently NVIDIA is working with some of the game publishers to develop ray tracing in the games. We saw that on a Battlefield 5, uh, the new Tomb Raider and then also Metro Exodus and Honestly, it looks amazing. The new uh, ray tracing that uh, the games will have, the shadows and the lighting, everything, it looks so spectacular. But now what I want to know is how these new cards will perform if you turn a ray tracing off. Because most games these days, they don't have ray tracing built into yet. NVIDIA is working with some of the game developers to add racing, uh, ray tracing to their games, but that's also gonna take a while and Currently the most popular card is a GTX 1060 and that's not going to be able to handle ray tracing and they're not going to force everybody just to buy this new ray tracing card because nobody's really going to go for that that quick. We don't have the money for that. So for ray tracing to become more mainstream is probably going to still take a few years, probably two to four years for that. So when we just look at the specifications compared to the pricing for the cards, I kind of think that still the previous GTX range will perform better uh, if you buy a 1080 Ti and compare it to a 2080, the 1080 Ti will be faster. But now if you want to get the best possible quality with the ray tracing, then yes, the 2080 and the 2080 Ti is going to destroy the previous generation uh, because it's not going to be quick enough to really handle the ray tracing. And all of that is for us gamers. What about the people that want to get these cards for more productivity applications? And that is still where a lot of people do go for rather the, the gaming a GTX GeForce brands instead of a Quadro, a Tesla, a Volta or anything like that because the availability is better and then the prices is cheaper as well. 
So here I think the new RTX GPUs will be a lot better. Now pricing is still a concern there, uh, but for people working in the 3D rendering world, uh, this is going to be a massive increase. Because of the ray tracing and all of that, you want to get the proper uh, shading and lighting and all of that for your render objects. And especially if you do animations or like uh, any th the CGI or anything like that, which is becoming a lot more popular. We're seeing like Corridor Digital, for example, they make massive uh, uh, CGI uh, videos. And they also use like four uh, 1080 Ti's to render their, their videos and it takes forever to do. So that is where I think these new RTX cars is going to make a massive difference. Uh, rendering is going to be a lot faster, but again, I, I'm not in that world, so I don't really know all of the specifications that you need for that type of work. But something that I just want to mention, I could have this wrong, but when I was listening to the presentation, uh, when they did all of uh, the benchmarks, how the new uh, Turing architecture compared to all the, the D DXG, that massive supercomputer, uh, where it was uh, the RTX cards were faster, they didn't say which card they used. Uh, so nowhere did they say it was a 2080 Ti they used or a 2080, they just said Turing, and that's kind of all. And when we look at the cards they have, yes, they announced the 2080 Ti, 2080, and the 2070, but also previously they announced their new Quadro RTX 8000 GPUs, which is going for $20,000. So I kind of think that they didn't really state that, but for all of the benchmarks compared to the higher end systems like that at DXG, they used the Quadro RTX instead. Now again, I could have this wrong that they did state that, but I, I didn't really hear that. So I do feel that they kind of kind of wanted to trick us there a bit, showing that these cards are a lot faster, but they kind of used a $20,000 Quadro card to compare it to. So that's not really fair. I could have this wrong again, but that's kind of what I heard. And I'm just continuing a bit with the new Founders Edition cards from NVIDIA. They ditched the blower style and have gone with a dual fan design that NVIDIA did state is uh, delivers 10 degrees of better cooling and adds a fifth of the noise compared to the previous uh, blower style. Uh, so I can understand that the blower styles were loud and they weren't the best cooling, but if you had a, a closed, uh, a very tightly packed system, then they were good. Uh, you are also able to apply a better overclocks to these compared to the previous Founders Editions. So that is also a nice thing if you want to get one of these Founders Editions. Uh, but that is with just the Founders Edition. We will have to wait and see what the other board manufacturers uh, get up to, like MSI, Gigabyte, MS, uh, ASUS, and EVGA. So we'll probably see better cooling even afterwards with those cards compared to the finer edition and also higher overclocking. But I'll just uh, finally going over the pricing again for these cards. Uh, all of the pricing they mentioned was starting uh, from, so the 2070 is starting from 499, 2080, 699, and the 2080 Ti, 999. And also the Quadro RTX 8000 to $20,000. Uh, so the Founders Edition is more than that uh, because it's a kind of the first release and it's the Founders Edition because Nvidia kind of cherry picked the, the GPUs to have really good performance. So that is more expensive. But also the release date is on the 20th of September. Timber for the 2080 and the 2080 Ti. Uh, so pre orders are open for those, but we will have to wait for the new 2070 uh, for that official release date and then the cards below that. But now, after going all of that, should you pre order one of these uh, Founders Edition GPUs? Honestly, I wouldn't say you should. Uh, just wait for the official benchmarks to be released. Because I still think from just the specs we have, 
uh, the current GTX GPUs will deliver a better gaming performance for the price compared to uh, the new uh, RTX GPUs. But if you want to have the best quality, you want to play 4K at 120 Hz uh, HDR and have all of the ray tracing, then yes, the new cards will be much, much better compared to the GTX. But for the basic of us, then I wouldn't really see that big of a performance increase. But again, we will have to wait and see how they compare. So wait for the official benchmarks. And that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching guys, I do hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, let me know what you guys think about these new GPUs down there in the comments below. Are you getting one? I did see a lot of people saying they're gonna get the 2080 Ti. Good luck to you, you're bloody rich, so that's awesome. But for us normal people, yeah, probably it's, it's a bit too much. So let me know also if you'd rather go for like the 2060, 2050, 2050i later on if they come out, uh, but yeah. Thanks for watching guys and I'll check all of you next time. Cheers guys.